So here's two basic problems where we're solving uh, for either a variable or something like that, or either direct relationship or one where we got to set up some equations and solve. So the four things we just went over again, parallelogram gives me opposite sides parallel, opposite sides congruent, opposite angles congruent, diagonals bisecting each other. So if I look at this first problem here, this is pretty straightforward. Parallelogram. Opposite sides parallel, that's going to help me with these two angles. Opposite sides congruent is going to help me find A and B. Opposite angles congruent is going to help me find Y. Well, let's do opposite sides first. So it's straightforward. If this side has a length of A, 8, sorry, A has to be 8. If this side has a length of 10, opposite sides are congruent, so B has to have a length of 10. Opposite angles are congruent. So if that's 62 degrees, the angle opposite is also going to be 62 degrees. Now to find x in this case, uh, a couple avenues you go about, and I know some teachers teach one of the properties of a parallelogram is consecutive angles or supplementary, uh, which is basically same side interior angles, because that's what we learned with parallel lines. Are these sides parallel? You bet it. That's a definition of a parallelogram. And if we look at those lines being parallel, if I highlight the parallel lines, here's my transversal, yikes! That shouldn't be legal. I change those noisy pens, but if I highlight that, it gives me that C shape. We said that C shape gave me two same side interior angles, and those are supplementary. So these two angles have to add up to 180. So I want X, and I know this angle is 62. I'm simply saying, all right, 180 minus 62 degrees is going to leave me with 118 degrees. So that's, you know, that's one, I don't want to say uh, requires no thought, but it's a basic, like, direct relationship. Now when we get over to this next problem, this is leading us into something you guys did in Algebra 1 where I've got an X and a Y that's going to be in the same equation. So again, we can use any one of those four things. So the one thing I would look at here is this side has a length of 30, this side has to have a length of 30 because opposite sides are congruent. So I get 2X plus 5Y equals 30. And again, they're stating before we start these that both of these shapes are parallelograms, which is why we can use those things. The next thing is that diagonals bisect each other. So my next equation is going to be, hey, 18 and 2x plus 2y have to be equal to each other. So now it's like flashback to Algebra 1. How do I solve equations that have two variables in it? Like if it had one variable in it, if it was just 2x equals 30, it would be easy to solve. But now it's 2x plus 5y. So whenever you have two equations, an equation with two unknowns in it, you want to get two equations out of it, which we did. We've got one equation that has an x and a y in it, and another equation, different one, that has an x and a y in it. So if you think back of, to your ways of how do we solve systems of equations, you've got uh, substitution uh, methods, solve one of these for either x or y, whatever that equals, substitute it into the other equation, and solve. Uh, we have the uh, elimination method. Elimination method, I know uh, some teachers or some textbooks call this the combination method, but you're combining the two equations, either adding them together or subtracting them to get one of the variables to drop back. And in this case, it works out rather nicely, because if I come up here and I just say, all right, subtract that whole equation from the one on top of it, my x terms are going to drop out. Now, the biggest mistake I usually see people make is if I'm subtracting, that's going to change the sign of everything in that equation. So I've got 2x minus 2x is 0, right? 5y minus 2y is 3y. 30 minus 18 is 12. Now, I mean, that cleans up to just be 3y equals 12. Real basic equation now that we can solve for y, divide both sides by 3, and we're going to be left with y equals 4. It's only half, we're only halfway there. Though. Like a lot of kids, you know, the main mistake I'll see is, oh, I got y equals, I'm done, move on to the next problem. No. I need to know what is the x value that also works in this system of equations. So now we take that, and I'm going to substitute it back into one of the equations. Does it matter which one we substitute it into? No. But if I look at these, like, this equation is dealing with numbers that are a lot smaller than these. So not that I can't substitute it in here for uh, y and then solve for x, but let's do the bottom one. So I'm going to say 2x plus 2 times y, which we just said was 4, equals 18. Now, we've got an equation, multi-step, that we're just solving here. Let's clean up the side. 2x plus 2 times 4 gives us 8, equals 18. 
Next step, I want to get the variable term by itself. So I got to move everything else over. If it's positive, I subtract it. If it's negative, I'm going to add it. So since it's plus 8, we're going to subtract 8 from both sides. Cancels. 18 minus 8 is 10. Now I've got 2x equals 18. Divide both sides by dose, and we get x equal to 5. So if, again, if you wanted to write your, you know, I know some teachers are like, write your answers in ordered pair. It would be 5 comma 4. It's an x comma, I mean, typically, you know, I, I just say what's x equal, what's 5 or y equal. So in this case, we get x is 5 and y is 4. So there's just a basic example, one taking it up a notch a little, and we'll look at one next that is a, um, quadratic equation. So let me go ahead and erase this. Uh, before I erase this one, notice like there was a 20 there that we didn't do anything with. So you've got to be able to now distinguish. It can't, I can't always give you like that cookie cutter problem where uh, this is 10 and that's 2x. And it's like, all right, I know the only thing I have to deal with is 10 and 2x and I got to figure out what the relationship is between the two. No, there's stuff in here and it's basically saying, can you interpret this uh, data to say, what do I need and what don't I need? I didn't really need to know that that length was 20. It is, but I didn't need to know it. So let me erase this. Let's go with a systems, or, um, yeah, systems of equation problems. Let me, uh, I think I got one of those uh, down here. So we had a problem that looked something like this. Diagonals were drawn in there. And they had some angles up here. And I think... Uh, Let's go with this one. Angle 1 was 3x. I'm just going to write the, what the angles are. Angle 2, which was up here, was 4x. Angle 3, which was uh, over here, was x squared minus 70. So again, they're telling us, and then they wanted to know, um, let me put some letters up here too. This was like A, B, C, D. And here it was find um, angle... C, D, A, find angle C, D, A. They want to know what's the measure of angle C, D, A. So in this case, they tell us ahead of time, it's already a parallelogram. What does that tell me? Parallelogram, opposite sides parallel. Opposite sides congruent. Opposite angles are congruent. Well, like this whole angle, 3x and 4x, equals this whole angle down here, but I don't know what that is. Uh, you know, diagonals bisecting each other is not going to help us, but the parallel lines do help us. I know this angle down here. So if I use that angle and some of the parallel sides, I get that Z shape, a pair of alternate interior angles. If these lines are parallel, which they are because it's a parallelogram, what has to be true about alternate interior angles? They have to be equal to each other. So I can get an equation now of x squared minus 70 equals 3x. So I got x squared minus 70 equals 3x. I now want to solve this. Well, notice it's like, whoa, oh I got an x squared term, an x term, and a constant term. So this, again, flashback to Algebra 1. Your Algebra 1 teacher was probably like, when you have a second degree term, a first degree term, and a constant term, we want to get it set equal to zero. I don't know why the Algebra 1 teachers sound like that. I hear them all day in the hallway, they sound like that. But that's what my Algebra 1 teacher sounded like back in the day, right? So I'm going to bring the 3x over. How do we do that? Subtract 3x from both sides. The minus 70 stays the same. Now it's set equal to zero. So now I look at this and I say, all right, you know, please, please factor. You know, we want to see, does this factor into two binomials? You know, we're in the realm of geometry right now. I'm not going to give you a quadratic equation that doesn't factor or that's irrational, because if it doesn't factor, uh, it's basically an irrational number, right? Or, you know, to some extent of that. So we're going to give you things that factor nicely. This one's a real basic one. We might spice it up and make them a little harder. But when the first term's x squared, what has to be the first term here? x and x. It's the only two things I can multiply together that's going to give me x squared. Now this is the way I was always, you know, I've always factored. I know some teachers teach different methods of, of trying to factor uh, a trinomial into the product of two binomials. But I always went this term first, then I looked at the last term, and I looked at the sign of the last term. If that was negative, the only way to get a negative number when I multiply two things together is one of them has to be positive, one of them has to be negative. Now I look at this number, 70. Now, since it's negative, I want to say, are there any factors of 70 that have a difference of 3? Well, 7 and 10, right? 7 times 10 is going to give me 70, and they have a difference of 3. Then I look at the sign of this, and I said, all right, the larger number needs to be negative. So if it was 7 and 10, the 7 is going to go here, the 10 is going to go there. 
Still not done, right? X plus 7 in parentheses times X minus 10 parentheses equals 0. There's something called the zero product property of multiplication, that if this times this equals 0, either this has to equal 0, or this has to equal 0, or they both could equal 0. So now we're going to set up two equations from this. Either the first term has to equal 0, x plus 7, or the next term, x minus 10, has to equal 0. Now solve both of these. Now again, these are pretty straight and basic to solve. If there was a coefficient out in front of that x, it might be a little more difficult. Subtract 7 from both sides, we get x equal to negative 7. Add 10 to both sides, we get x equal to 10. Negative 7 and 10 satisfy this quadratic equation. But it's like, whoa, wait a minute. Back to reality. We've got to go back to our diagram and plug both of these back in and see, does it give me real values? If x was 10, it works, right? 3 times 10 is 30. 4 times 10 is 40. 10 squared minus 70 is 30. Those two angles are equal. That makes sense. If I plug in negative 7, 3 times negative 7 is negative 21. Can I have an angle that's a negative degree measure? You know, not in our, not in our world, right? So although negative 7 satisfies this quadratic equation, it's not a solution that's going to work with our diagram. Don't make this mistake, though. That does not mean that every time you get a negative answer here, when you solve a quadratic, that it's automatically not going to work, because it depends on what you're plugging it into. You know, if I had something where, suppose I didn't have... Uh, those terms up here, but I only had an x squared or something in it that I was particularly looking at, now it doesn't matter if my x is positive or negative, right, when I'm squaring it. Of course, of course it's still going to give me a negative uh, answer here because 49 uh, minus 70 is going to give me a negative value. But I'm just saying you, got, you can't just say, hey, it's negative, it's not going to work. You always have to go back to the diagram and plug it back in. Now, it says, what's the measure of angle CDA? This whole angle. Remember, opposite angles of a parallelogram are congruent. So this whole angle equals this whole angle. And if I plug 10 in here, 3 times 10 is going to give me 30. 4 times 10 is going to give me 40. The whole angle is going to be 70 degrees. So we get angle CDA is equal to 70 degrees. So hopefully that gives you an idea of what it looks like when we're dealing with uh, quadratic equations. I'm going to uh, go ahead and uh, shut down for a second. Then we're going to come back and take a look at what do we do if we're trying to prove something as a parallelogram.